I cannot believe I live in an age where we can actually download our FPS. Check it out. What up, YouTube? B-Side here once again. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about this nifty little app that I've been watching on other YouTube channels for over a month now. It's called Lossless Scaling. And we're going to talk about what it is. We're going to talk about the benefits that you can get in low end and mid range cards with this little application using its scaling techniques. And also we're going to show you some gameplay footage of maybe three to four games so that you can get the idea on how this stuff works, you know, get the benefits and you can see the image quality that it offers. So before I start, if you like content like this, and want to keep following on on, co on content like this. You can also follow my channel by hitting the subscribe button, liking this video so that the algorithm keeps me up and comment on the channel. If you use this scaling app and if you like it, just let me know in the comments below. Without further ado, let's get started. So what is lossless scaling? Lossless scaling is an application that was developed so that it uses its own scaling techniques as well as AMD FSR, uh, NIS and other scaling techniques to give you not only a good image quality, but at the same time gives you performance using their frame generation algorithms up to four times. This app is also available through steam app. So you can go ahead and search it on steam and purchase it for $6 and 99 cents. At least that's the price in the U S and once you actually buy this, you can launch it. As you can see, I have it at administrator mode, which I recommend you actually do. And the first thing you're going to see when the application pops up is this little window right here. Uh, the first thing that you see over here is first of all, you can actually make uh, different profiles for different games or different settings that you want to use in, in each game. You can just pop the profile in and press scale and it'll do it for you. But if you don't know how to use it, uh, you can actually do one profile and you can keep it on auto. Uh, this will uh, scale it to the aspect ratio of the resolution that you have. And here we have the scaling types. This is LS1. This is uh, Fidelity, Fidelity FX uh, Super Resolution. And this is NVIDIA Image Scaling. And you have different types of scaling modes right here. Right now I have it off since I'm using the standard DLSS which is not recommended, uh, but I'm using the scaling modes uh, based on the LSS on my games and then using the frame generation option, which you can actually take it off if you don't want it. Uh, you can use a uh, performance boost by just scaling the thing down and then upscaling it using the scaling type so that you can get quite similar performance to either DLSS or AMD FSR. Now, the first thing you're going to do when you open this app is go to the settings and you're going to start as an administrator here. You can change the hotkey. You can minimize the window, but I suggest you leave everything else on default, close it. And then we're going to be using frame generation. In this case, we're going to use LSFG 3.0, which is their latest frame generation technique. And we're going to be using four times the performance. Uh, as my personal preference, we're going to use the same resolution scale because I'm using DLAA in most of the games. But if I'm not using DLAA, DLSS itself would, will downscale it and then re upscale it using their own technique. And if you go here to the bottom, you use uh, the different rendering methods over here. And in sync mode, uh, you can allow tearing, uh, giving you. Uh, straight up no vsync and screen tearing, or you can use the default, which will use the computers either G sync or whatever sync type that you have uh, for your monitor. I suggest you leave this uh, on default. You can use G sync support, and this option right here is called Draw FPS, which will use its own overlay to give you the correct amount of FPS given in the screen rather than the ones that stay in your other overlays. This application right here does not like 
overlay. So it uses its own overlay so that you can get an idea of how many frames you're getting and how many frames are being capped to multiply them. So everything else is left on default, but if you're using scaling type, before I forget, you can actually use a scaling mode. And up here, you can down the resolution maybe to like 75% of your resolution. It gives it sharpness and it gives performance mode, which if you click on it, like if you wave the cursor over it, it'll say that it's a faster version of LS1, which is better suited for less powerful GPUs, but has slightly worse quality. So if you're having or suffering performance issues, you can actually click this performance mode and it'll give you a little bit of a performance boost with image quality sacrifice. But I'm going to leave it as defaults since I already stated that I'm going to be using DLSS. Also, before I forget, since we're going to be testing games, this application will not work without a game on, meaning that you have to have a game on and also you have to set it into borderless full screen or uh, windowed borderless mode in order for you to reap the benefits of lossless scaling. As far as I'm concerned, it does not work on full screen mode. So make sure you set the game to window borderless or borderless full screen mode in order to reap the benefits from the scale it mode. So without further ado, let's test it in some games. The first game that we're going to try using lossless scaling is Black Myth Wukong. And the reason why is because this app works really well with Black Myth Wukong. Now I'm going to show you some settings that you need to change in order for it to work properly. This is being the first, put it in borderless mode. Now you can cap the frame uh, in case you're having too many artifact issues or your game is crashing or something like that. You can cap the frames so that you can have a better experience and tear free or use V-Sync for your refresh uh, rate on the monitor. Uh, my personal preference, I have weak motion blur uh, because I do like motion blur in games and I feel like it masks some of those artifacts with motion blur. In the graphics section, DLSS resolution, it cannot be taken off. Uh, there's no option to turn it off. So I'm using DLSS with 100% scaling, which would be DLAA. And I'm also using frame generation because it further boosts uh, the FPS a little bit more. But you can actually see more artifacts, which I don't mind during my gameplay. I did play it for an hour. It might crash on your computer. If you have an earlier uh, card, do not use frame generation or it's automatically gonna be off, but you can benefit the same way that I'm doing with this 4090 graphics card. By the way, this system has a Ryzen 9 5900X and a 4090 Rock Strix. And in most cases, I might be CPU bound, but that's because I'm waiting for a better CPU to come out. Uh, or should I say, I'm waiting for the 9950X 3D to come out so that I can make my thoughts and choose which next gen processor I'm going to buy. Now I'm going to show you the game itself uh, with frame gen. It goes about 68 to 70 FPS, depending on the location. It might jump to like 120, 140, but this is how the game plays with frame generation with standard frame generation from Nvidia. And as you can see, I'm going to show you, it is a very responsive game. You can literally see as I'm panning that it's uh very responsive in regular mode and you can still see some artifacts from the frame generation now i'm gonna turn lossless scaling on and i'm gonna switch scenes because it might flicker um, and you won't be able to see the actual fps that it's displaying so i'm gonna switch scenes so that you can actually see the actual fps that it's displaying right now in the river tuner statistics that's the actual fps but once i switch to lossless scaling it's not going to read the same FPS and I'm going to show you. So I'm going to put the controller down for a minute, do my hockey. It turned frame generation on. I'm going to switch scenes. And as you could see in the top left corner, you could see that it's capped to 50 frames per second. But if I take off Riva Tuner statistics, you could see that the overlay that lossless scaling brought 
capped it at 51 and gave you 200 FPS extra. Now, a lot of people have been doubtful as to the input lag that this brings. And let me tell you something, other than the artifacts that you're seeing in screen as I pan the screen left and right, the game is super responsive. Like I can show you, like it's literally responding almost like normal and it looks almost identical to the dlss and it's giving me frame generation times four which augments my frames to 200 fps i'm going to show you that during load it can actually give you the same performance i got caught with the arrows right there but don't worry about that ah i died <laughs> i just got to this level and i know that the arrows kill me i've died a couple of times already but yeah that's literally it like you can actually be under load and still get the same performance as frame generation times four and as you can see it works very perfect i'm using 1440p resolution it's not 4k in 4k it might do a little bit less fps but it's still gonna give you that smooth experience let me see let me try to kill this guy real quick and see if uh, I don't get killed this time. Oh, getting hit with arrows here, but I did kill the guy. I avenged my previous death. So after that, we're just gonna change it to a different game so that you can see what other games benefit from this. And we're gonna do Resident Evil 4 now. This is the second game, which is Resident Evil 4. In case you're wondering why my game looks so smooth, and looks different than with your standard TAA is because I modded it so that I can put DLSS modes into it. But that will be another video for another time. But now I'm gonna show you the normal uh, way Resident Evil looks. You can tell by the Riva Tuner statistics that it runs at 89 to 91 FPS on this area. And as you can see, it's very responsive with like maybe eight to 10 milliseconds latency. And now I'm gonna switch it to lossless scaling so that you can see how much FPS I'm gonna actually get with this game. So I'm gonna switch, switch scenes. And as you can see, the game is butter smooth. It capped it at 86 and it gave me 216 FPS on this one. As I don't know if you could see my mouse panning left and right, but it remained with the same latency. And as you can see, in here in in Riva Tuner statistics that the latency stayed between 10 and 12 milliseconds and this is perfect you can actually shoot and you can barely see any screen tearing which is the wonderful thing about this game that you that older games and older titles they don't give you as much artifacts because in reality it doesn't have any frame generation or DLSS so since I'm running a mod and also I'm running frame generation on this, you're gonna have a better clear picture quality on games that don't support frame generation. And as you can see here, everything looks almost exactly the same as it would on 1440p, as well as uh, the DLAA mod, which I will make a video, definitely if you guys are interested. But as you can see, it's very smooth. Again, under load. Um, and as you can see in the overlay, it fluctuates, but it doesn't give you loss of performance or image quality. Now we're gonna move on to the next game. The third game I'm gonna show you is one of my favorite games of all time, and it is Robocop Rogue City. I highly recommend it. It is a very gory, very intense, very action-driven game, and it looks gorgeous as you can see here. I'm going to show you the FPS counter uh, in Riva Tuner statistics, and it's running at 135, 139 FPS. Depending on the instance, again, uh, it ranges between 150 to 200 FPS on stock. Uh, but when I put lossless scaling, something peculiar happens. It, kept, it caps my frame at maybe 100 FPS, and it boosts it to 215 FPS, but it keeps it there. But I feel like there's more FPS going on on the screen than usually the overlay is telling me. So I'm gonna show you guys 
how this works with the scaling. We're going to do the hockey here and then switch scenes. And as you could see now, it capped my frame at just below 100 frames a second. But as you could see, what I was talking about earlier, if I take Riva Tuner off, it gives me 216 FPS. It goes down uh, from time to time, but it doesn't go down to hinder performance, which is what you want to see in games. You know what I mean? I highly recommend this game. It's beautiful. And it's, I don't know if how much of my hand you can see panning left, right, up, and down. But as you can see, it has almost the same response time as you would with regular uh, standard frame generation. Uh, it goes between 8 to like maybe 12 to, 12 to 13 ms of latency. So again, I take off... Uh, the Riva Tuner statistics and it just plays just like if it would regularly you know what I mean so I highly recommend this game this game is beautiful uh, if you into the eye candy of stuff and it runs really well on cards so now it runs even better on earlier cards because of this application because of downloading free FPS <laughs> for $7. But yeah, highly recommend it. So my final thoughts about this uh, lossless scaling app, you can get a huge benefit and huge improvement on FPS with uh, lossless scaling, especially in uh, ray trace games and heavily loaded ray trace games. Uh, but if you're gonna use it for any other application, it might help. But in my personal experience of being like maybe two weeks using it, it doesn't give you any performance boost when using uh, when using it in Red Dead Redemption 2. I noticed that it kind of kept my frames down. Um, but again, I would have to make more tests like this on games. But it actually didn't help at all in the performance. And I tried it on Path of Exile 2, which doesn't have any ray tracing or anything like that. It's not a heavy loaded game and it doesn't give me any performance boost as well. This is highly recommended for users who are using ray trace games and they wanna up the performance with either older cards or cards that are gonna be stuck in just 2X frame generation. Let's see if frame generation times two uh, when it comes out in our, in our 40 series cards works a little bit better but I'm still going to be using this lossless scaling app in some of the applications or games that I actually use on a daily basis. Um, again, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you're going to be using this app or if you're going to opt out of frame generation uh, because you believe that it's giving you fake frames and stuff like that. If you're one of those, then... I don't recommend it, but if you like using uh, frame generation, disregarding uh, image quality or artifacts, I highly recommend this thing. And make sure you support uh, their development team. They're doing an excellent job with this little application right here. And I fully enjoy this application. Anyways, uh, that's it for today's video. I hope you like it. And until next time, peace out.